I'm uh, going to do a short reading from um, Ovid, and this is a translation of his uh, um, book called The Story of the Fall of Icarus. And uh, I'm not going to read the whole lot of it, we haven't got time. But the thing is, the reason I've chosen Ovid is because he was one of the first poets that I translated when I was at school. So I have sort of associations with it. And I was asked to read something, so naturally it was Ovid. Even in English, the language is lovely. The rising moon was now displaying her horns for the sixth time. And still the outcome of the struggle hung in the balance. Winged victory had long been hovering between the two sides, undecided. There was a tower belonging to the king, built onto those tuneful city walls, where Leto's son, they say, lay down his golden lyre, so that his music was imparted to the masonry. Often in the days of peace, Nyssa's daughter had been in the habit of climbing up there and flinging pebbles against the stones to make them ring. During the war, too, she used often to watch the grim struggle from that vantage point, and as the conflict dragged on, she had come to know the names of the leaders and to recognize their arms and their horses and their attire and their Cretan quivers better than any of the others. She knew their general, Europa's son. Indeed, she knew him better than she should have done. In her eyes, Minos was perfect. 